In this episode of Moi TV, I'm talking about why you should think about using personal branding photography in your business. Arriving at the decision to go with a personal branding approach in your business can sometimes be a little bit of a struggle. Once you've made a decision to go with a personal branding approach, the next bit is figuring out how to do it really well with the right kind of personal branding photography. If you just made this decision or you're wondering why your personal brand isn't really performing very well for you, then this is the episode for you. For the very best in personal branding, photography, ideas and inspirations, you should definitely subscribe to Moi TV. Make sure when you do that, you hit the bell and you're gonna be notified every single Friday when a new episode comes out. Getting the right kind of personal branding photography planned out and working well in your personal branding business is often where a lot of personal branded entrepreneurs go wrong. Today I'm giving you three very simple ways that you can start approaching your personal branding photography and avoid all of those common pitfalls. I've had my own photography business now for eight years. Prior to that I worked in marketing and public relations so trust me when I tell you I gotcha. Last week in this three-part special, I talked in detail about how you can convey your personal branding through the right kind of personal branding photography. Next week, I'm gonna be looking at who I think should definitely adopt this approach in their business. And I'm also gonna be abundantly clear about who I think should avoid this strategy in their business like the plague. <laughs> so that means it's part two of the three part special and today we're looking at the big why. Why should you even think about doing personal branding photography? Why should you even think about having a personal branding approach in your marketing? So let's get into it. The best reason to think about why you should go with a personal brand approach in your business is because we're living in a time when the entire world is obsessed with the story of ourselves. <laughs> it is human nature to feel feelings of nostalgia and comfort when we regress back into our childhood ways of learning by listening and taking in stories. We never tire of emotionally investing ourselves into the idea of a quest. Be it Frodo Baggins with the ring, Luke Skywalker with the force, or our favorite obscure musicians rise to fame at getting booked at the John Peel stage at this year's Glastonbury. Or our favorite contestant on the latest series of Love Island and their ability to pull all of the other contestants on the island as well. Side note, if you love Love Island, just know that I judge you. <laughs> At the same time though, I fully accept that some of us find this a real cool guilty pleasure. I have my own when it comes to reality TV and I can probably tell you in depth about what's going on with most of the Real Housewives in the entire Real Housewives franchise. So if you wanna judge me for that in return, go right ahead. <laughs> We all have our guilty pleasures, don't we? If you feel brave enough, why don't you share your guilty pleasure when it comes to the story of us and the obsession of the story of us, probably in the realm of reality television, in the comments below. The next big point I wanna focus in on is the fact that you are able to build a good tribe of super fans in your small business when you go about using personal branding strategies to grow your small business. In order to seek out your strong advocates or your tribe, it's important that you get personal in real life as well as online when you're building a personal brand. Carefully surrounding yourself with the right kind of people to support you in the tough times will mean that you also have a cool posse of celebration buddies when it's time to celebrate the big wins in your business. And this leads me on nicely to sharing one of the methods, one of the most effective methods actually, of how I help new clients figure out how we create the right type of personal branding photography for them. And you can do this at home as well too. 
it's basically just methodically contacting all of your previous clients and contacting your network and asking them for their honest feedback about what they thought made you unique. Why did they pick you and not one of your competition? That's a real great question to start the ball rolling. And when we've gathered that data and collated it, usually something bubbles up to the surface. And when we have these unique points of interest, I'm able to jam on them and come up with some really unique creative ideas of what that might look if you try to explain it in a personal branding photograph or even in an entire photo shoot. There are many ways that you can bake a storyline like this into a personal branding photo shoot, but what makes it a really good set of photographs is if you come up with a unique and different way of doing this that really commands attention and also really spells it out for somebody who's taking in those images about you and your business. If you want to talk to me about how you can develop your personal brand with the right kind of personal brand and photography, then why don't you just go right ahead and book a cyber cocktail call with me? It's BYO, it's 30 minutes long. I make sure that I have time frames available to everyone around the world in different time zones. I'm going to put a link to that down here in the show notes. So take a look and I look forward to talking with you soon. Point three is all about thinking bigger and not thinking about just survival. When you use personal branding in your business, you're giving yourself the opportunity to disrupt the entire market that you operate in. Right now, at the time of filming, which is the beginning of 2020, we are still in the middle of this beautiful period of mass disruption. I like to think that that's a result of our democratic ability to create and document and broadcast in our own way on mass all of the time. I think it's like a renaissance actually. Whilst I'm unable to tell you a good prediction of how long I think this trend is gonna last, we can get a lot of helpful information about it from the history books. We know there have been many times of renaissance or many periods of renaissance throughout history. And all that really means is that there has been a period of time where there has been a moment of disruption in the way that things were at that time. Or sometimes what it can mean is that there was a collective fascination in a certain point of history with another point of history that's kind of weird and it stands out on the timeline. For instance, the dinosaur renaissance was a period of time in the early 1960s. A wide collection of different human beings in art, in science and in culture all kind of got together and got really interested in understanding and creating and talking about dinosaurs. I feel like right now we're in a period of time of self-broadcasting paired together with introspective communication. And whilst we've had the explosion of this across social media and in the marketing world and in business, you can also argue that we've seen a lot more developments and advancements in the world of mental health from the scientists that we have in the world. People are understanding how to treat mental health in a whole new way, and we're a lot more open to talking about it in our zeitgeist. So I predict that this will also be marked as a renaissance in time, but I don't know what it's gonna be called yet. <laughs> what do you think? Add your comments below. Jumping onto something that is very much of the time with the way that your business messaging is received is a beautiful way of pinning it to the timeline of history. And this can become a much bigger branding discussion about your legacy as a business owner. Do you want to be remembered as a mover and shaker of this current time? Or can you get on board with the idea of the celebrations of your 100th year in business anniversary, where the marketing people in that time will look back on all of the stuff that you created in order to make a beautiful 100 year celebration. If you feel that you are fundamentally on board with everything I've said today, then yes, you should definitely think about using personal branding photography in your personal branded business. 
You are going to absolutely love next week's episode, which is the final in our three-part special, where I'm looking at who I think should definitely do this and who should probably avoid this type of strategy in their business. I will see you then. Mwah. Now, before you go anywhere, don't forget to subscribe. Mwah.